Where would you like to be? Under the ground. Are you serious? Nancy's here. Sid could be here. I'm having a crisis of conscience, honestly, about whether or not to leave Iraq for Sid. I'm going to. As well. Because we never will know the absolute truth. We'll never know what happened. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in Manhattan, just outside the Chelsea Hotel. You can see it right behind me there. And this hotel is legendary for so many reasons. For an infamous reason, I'm gonna be, that's what the video is about. I'll let you know, Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey here. Dylan Thomas lived here. Arthur Miller, Thomas Wolfe, Leonard Cohen, Canadian, here at the Hotel Chelsea. The iconic sign. Oh my goodness. I've actually been here a few times before and I've walked all the way around it. That was back around 2000. It's gone under extensive renovations. It is very, very uh, nice inside. I've got, I'm gonna show you some clips walking around inside. I'm here to talk about Sid and Nancy. You think about rock couples, famous rock couples. Two come to mind to me. Kurt and Courtney, Sid and Nancy. And it was in this hotel where Nancy Spungen died. Now, in case you don't know who I'm talking about, Sid Vicious, basis for the Sex Pistols. He was out of the band by this time. This is. Uh, fall of 1978. I believe the date was October 12th. They were staying here in room 100. Now room 100 has been changed now since. It remained the same for a while afterwards. It was broken up into two rooms, 1E and 1F. I walked to the room once and I got to go right to the back. I, I, this is before YouTube. And it was very, very surreal being back there. And I found some video I'm gonna put in some clips or a shot of what the of what the room looks like now how they changed it how they modified it these first two clips are myself in the hotel that same day I filmed the video and coming up next you're going to see the hallway not this clip the next clip coming up you're going to see the hallway and inside Sid and Nancy's room shot by a resident that lived there and I'm going to be talking about him Arthur Nash and the Chelsea Hotel archives right after you watch this. This is incredible footage to see.
I just was walking around, I had a coffee and stuff, but you can't really go past a certain point. They're very, very private at the Chelsea. It makes sense why. And, you know, it's a morbid tour stop, and here I am, of course. But you can go right past, when you go right past the, um, what's it called, the, the front desk. Those are where the rooms 100 and up are. Just right past it. I'm going to put in some little diagrams, show you where the room was and what it looks like today. So this is the floor plan of room 100. And you can see right here, that arrow is going right to the red dot. That is where Sid and Nancy's room is. This comes courtesy of Arthur Nash from the History Eyewitness channel here on YouTube. His Instagram is Chelsea Hotel NYC. There will be links below. And he runs pretty much a channel and page that is dedicated to preserving the legacy and history of the Chelsea Hotel. Arthur, I cannot thank you enough for this footage and the pictures. That is Sid and Nancy's bathroom window looking out into the alley and that is the frame that Arthur managed to salvage and keeps to this day. Now these are all renovations that you see that were happening to the room throughout the years. Originally the room was divided into two rooms, 1E and 1F. Arthur lived at the hotel for quite a long time and he was surprised to find it nearly intact at one point. In the past 12 months it has been converted from an office space utilized by hotel management into a hotel suite that is no longer recognizable. The original bathroom was demolished completely in favor of a large fancy marble bath. So what you are looking at is shots of the bathroom being demolished in 2011. It was then rebuilt and demolished and rebuilt again in 2022 and 2023. It is now one large suite with the entrance from the main corridor. Many people when they enter the Hotel Chelsea are confused about where to find the exact room. If you were to go in, straight ahead is the lobby you'll see stairs behind it. You go up those stairs, and then it's to the right. If you're taking the elevator, it would be to the left. For 45 years, the hotel told guests the room no longer existed. The doorway seen in the diagram leading to the red dot has not existed in many years. Before the most recent renovation, the doorway was replaced with a kitchenette. All kitchens have been removed by the new owners, so it's just a hallway now. The room was removed from the rolls in the 1980s and renamed 103. It was rented to a long-term tenant and couldn't be accessed from the main corridor. Until they documented it in 2011, everybody thought room 100 had been located on the opposite side of the hall. They were loners. They were quiet people. Very few people even in the hotel knew about their existence. Did they ever quarrel? No. They were really very much in love. Well, I thought so. And uh, they were very pleasant, nice people. Now they had a very quiet, now they had a very, very volatile relationship, Sid and Nancy, to say the least. In January 1978, the Sex Pistols had broken up. So bass player Sid and his girlfriend Nancy, they had serious heroin habits. So they came here to New York City. Not the best choice in the late 70s, I would think. And they were all over the city, doing all sorts of things. It's well documented. But October 12, 20 year old Nancy Spungen, she bled to death on the bathroom floor. There are some photos. I'm gonna see about inserting them. It's gonna be tricky because they are somewhat um, graphic. Just a few months later, Sid Vicious was awaiting trial for her murder because he was the only one in the hotel room with her. But he died from an overdose, and we're gonna go there too. After Sid Vicious died, they just kind of put an end to the investigation and my PD into Nancy's death and just it was a closed case that Sid Vicious was assumed to have done it. They really had no witnesses. They had, you know, there was a knife left behind, but nothing could be proven. So their hotel room was a bit of a hot spot for junkies and hangers on, groupies. People were coming and going at all hours. This Cafe Chelsea, I should say, was not here before when I was here. That little restaurant over there was. And there's a bar inside that serves somewhat okay coffee. That's what I just had. On the morning of October 12th, when Sid woke up, he found Nancy dead on the bathroom floor. She had a knife wound in her abdomen. The coroner's determined that she bled to death. Now, 
Police determined that the knife used to kill Nancy was identical to the 007 flip knife that he had purchased on 42nd Street. Now, something else I read about the knife. There's a 007 knife similar to the one that Sid Vicious owned. But the police report noted that the knife was a Jaguar Wilderness K11 right there that you see with a 5-inch blade. So not the same knife that he owned. Now, after his arrest, Sid Vicious gave a lot of different reasons as to what happened, or a lot of different um, stories to what happened that night. See, people are coming here just to take pictures of that iconic sign. Next, in December. He said the two fought and that while he stabbed her, he never meant to kill her. He later said Nancy fell on the knife. And then eventually, he finally said he just didn't remember what happened. Now, there are some people in the punk community, they believe that there was foul play involved, but somebody other than Sid. There's a belief that Nancy was killed in a robbery by drug dealers when a friend of Sid and Nancy's, they noted that a large amount of money was missing from the hotel room. But this claim was never investigated by the NYPD. So it left many people wondering, did Sid do it or did someone else? A journalist by the name of um, Phil Strongman, he said that a character actor named Rockets Red Glare was responsible for Nancy's death. But Rockets Red Glare denied that, but he passed away in 2001. And now I'm going to continue the story where Sid Vicious passed away. Not too far from here. Because the story gets crazier and crazier, and then we're finally going to go to the final resting place of Nancy Spongeon. I made it over to the West Village. That was about a 20 minute walk, 15, 20 minute walk, not too far. Um, and here's the apartment building where Sid died. Just like four months later. That's the apartment there, is 1B. Let's take a closer look in a moment. 10 days after Nancy's death, Sid Vicious tried to kill himself by slitting his wrist with shreds from a broken light bulb and he was taken to Bellevue Hospital. For all you Law & Order fans, Bellevue is a real hospital, because they mentioned it quite a bit on that show. Well, there is a plaque over there, but not at this one. Let me see what that says. While he was in Bellevue, he tried to jump out a window. Orderlies tried to pull him back. They succeeded. While he was shouting, I want to be with my Nancy. While he was out on bail, he gave an interview where he said that Nancy's death was inevitable and that it was meant to happen. And he went on to say that Nancy always said that she would die before she was 21. And what do you think made it happen? It was meant to happen. Nancy always said she'd die before she was 21. <coughs> In the same interview, he said that, continuing his line of thinking where's how is that he said that he wanted to be underground where would you like to be under the ground now even though he used to be a sex pistol he didn't have a lot of money so for legal fees there was a report that Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones paid for his representation then a few decades later Johnny uh, Rotten John Lydon stated it was true that Mick Jagger got in there and brought lawyers into it on Sid's behalf. All he had to do, all Sid Vicious had to do was just like lay low. Lay low. But that's not really in his nature. Or wasn't in his nature, I should say. It's weird watching people come out of there. I wonder how many people know about the history of this building right here in the village. On December 9th, 1978, he attacked Patti Smith's uh, brother Todd at a concert. That was yeah 1978 and he was arrested and he was sent to Rikers Island for a 55 day detox so as I said to celebrate his release Sid Vicious's friends and his mother who continued to be consumed by her own drug addiction gathered for a party at the Greenwich Village apartment of his new girlfriend Michelle Robertson here the one you're looking at on Bank Street according to reports the group made spaghetti and Sid Vicious had a few beers but the lighthearted party eventually took an extremely dark turn. 
Sid Vicious managed to score an unusually strong batch of heroin, which may have been up to 95% pure. He subsequently overdosed. Sometime in the early hours of February 2, 1979, Sid Vicious died at age 21. Because of this, he never stood trial for the murder of Nancy Spungen. Sid's mother, Anne Beverly, claimed that Sid and Nancy had made a suicide pact and that Sid's death was not accidental. She had a handwritten note which she had said she had found in the pocket of Sid's leather jacket. It read, We had a death pact and I have to keep my half for the bargain. Please bury me next to my baby. Bury me in my leather jacket, jeans, and motorcycle boots. Goodbye. According to Deborah Spungen, Sid wrote a letter to her when he was last hospitalized saying approximately the, the same thing. We always knew that we would go to the same place when we died. We so much want to die together in each other's arms. I cry every time I think about that. I promised my baby that I would kill myself if anything ever happened to her and she promised me the same. This is my final commitment to my love. In 2006, Alan G. Parker, a British film documentary maker, claimed that before her death of a drug overdose in 1996, Sid's mother confessed to him that she intentionally injected her son with a fatal dose of heroin. However, in 2018, Alan G. Parker admitted that for profit, he invented this story for the producers of a TV show. And now we're gonna take a drive, not today, I'm still in New York, take a drive down to Pennsylvania to visit the final resting place of Nancy and possibly of Sid. Cemetery just outside of Philadelphia in Ben Salem, Ben Salem, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. I'm at the grave site of Nancy Spungen. And some believe that Sid Vicious, uh, his ashes were spread here by his mother. Now the story goes that his ashes were to be spread over her grave, over Nancy's grave, but that Nancy's parents said no, not a chance. But that somehow, because this is a while ago, so there's no find a grave, obviously. You know, I'm not being facetious, but you know, it would be difficult to find graves back then. Uh, Sid's mother came and placed, scattered the ashes, I should say, over her grave. Now, there's another story that when she arrived in London with his ashes, that she tipped over the urn at Heathrow Airport and its ashes got up into the airport ventilator system. But most people believe that his ashes were spread here over her grave. Another part of the story, in 1996, when Sid Vicious's, Sid Vicious's, Sid's mom passed away, she said that she deliberately shot him up that night that he died. She deliberately shot him up with heroin 
to spare him the pain of going to prison. Now, did Sid Vicious kill Nancy? We're never going to know. There's so many people going in and, out, in and out of that hotel room. I don't think we'll ever know for sure. So we're here to visit Nancy and possibly, probably Sid. It's difficult when he, if it's true that he did kill her to, to visit somebody and pay respects to them. But um, who knows? And who knows what was going through his mind, her mind. It's a tragedy. It's, it's, let's see Nancy's grave. thinking I'm getting close. I hope so. Not sure. Here she is. Your odyssey is over. Sleep in peace. Nancy Laura Spungen. February 27th, 1958 to October 12th, 1978. You can see a lot of it. This is a Jewish cemetery, so there are a lot of rocks here. This is King David Cemetery, I should have said. And looks like her father here, beloved husband, father, and grandfather, Franklin Sonny Spungen. He died just in 2010. Vibrant forever. Now that would be February 27, 1958, 20, 20 years old. And of course, that's her name in Hebrew underneath her name. If you're looking for Nancy, you're going to come in the cemetery. That's the entrance way over there where you can see the green of the gas station. That's the entrance. It's a weird little entrance. Come all the way around the back to the section I showed you. Look for these two um, outdoor crypts. You'll see them, big ones here, against the tree line. You'll find Nancy. Look for those poles and just walk over here. Nancy's here. Sid could be here. I'm having a crisis of conscience, honestly, about whether or not to leave a rock for Sid. I'm going to. As well. Because we never will know the absolute truth. We'll never know what happened. Rest in peace, Sid. Definitely more. Mm. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Sid Vicious. And of course, rest in peace, Nancy Spungen. Your odyssey is over. Sleep in peace. And gone too soon. Very sad. Beside her father. Wow. 32 years later. 32 years living without your daughter. Heartbreaking. There's still human beings, and I know she was, I believe she was diagnosed as schizophrenic at 15 years old. So she didn't have it easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, it's a beautiful little cemetery. I'd heard that it was run down. Somebody had told me that, and it's not at all. It's a beautiful cemetery. It's a, not a great day, you know, in terms of rain and dark already. It's only like 4 o'clock. But, yeah, it's a beautiful cemetery. Really well taken care of. Thanks for watching, everybody. Rest in peace, Nancy Spungen. Thank you all. Peace. Out. I'm the only the only two people that I can think of I would like to play with. Um, you know, I've been with. I think I'm sure. Yeah.
Sid, he's not interviewing me. Please try and wake up. Do you want me to make you a cup of coffee? Yeah, could you? Yes, I'll make you a cup of coffee. But will you try and fucking wake up, no, please? Because we, we gave him an interview I'll and do he wanted it. a good I'll interview. Alright? You, like, you're not talking intelligibly. You're falling asleep on your sunglasses. Wake the fuck up.